Kev, do you still believe? Now, where is Kev? Look at that. He's going to have to sprint. Are you going to sprint, Kev? You can come in between Jack and Bob. <laughs> Just sit down quietly. I haven't got a chair to sit down. Chance. We'll come in over here. <laughs> This ramshackle mob, barely held together by Ron Casey and later Sandy Roberts, ruled our lounge rooms for 28 years. There you are, good old scrap. Ruled a sport was a Melbourne institution. Uh, obviously things have uh, happened since I've been away for a couple of weeks. However, yes it is. <laughs> it was a delight to go to the world of sport. It genuinely was. And I would get all the gossip and the stories from Louie and Jack and from Roberts and, you know, everyone. <laughs> when the stars weren't gossiping or gagging, they were tugging for dear life. Look at that Richmond team as they hit the deck, losing the snap and then fighting back all the way. Undoubtedly the toughest job was being a judge on champion kick. There wasn't a long queue of volunteers to judge when Big Nick was a contestant. I never found football humorous as such. I couldn't get there like Lou and Jack Dyer and Crackers do. They get there and tell story after story after story. But to me, football is so serious. But what the viewers loved most about World of Sport and League teams was the stuff-ups. And luckily, there were plenty of them. All right, well, let's take this message while we're getting underway, and then we'll be back with the Sporting Handball semi-final. Well, we can't go because we haven't got any balls. After that, they kept a close eye on their balls. Casey never wanted anything that was, had a double entendre or was a little bit uh, rude or anything. He didn't like that at all. So we just behaved ourselves tremendously, except this day about the, about the golf. And uh, Louie's there getting a lesson from Colin Long and I walked in and said, boy, golly, you're not bad, Louie, you. He said, I'm a champion. I said, oh yeah, what, where do you play? What course do you play? He said, I play at all the courses around Melbourne. He's back on the intercourse chairman of Melbourne. And, oh, that, yeah, that was it. Mm. We, did, we didn't have too good a day for the rest of the day. In fact, I think we were reprimanded fairly strongly from Gay. Oh, hello. Ring back, lad. I'm doing the rest of me, will you? you don't, oh, oh. <laughs> Turns up, Edna. He hasn't got time no, now. It's the chef oh, we're having curried fish balls. What? Yeah, we need 125 grams of cold cooked fish. How many fish? fish would you need for 125 <laughs> fish balls? Not too balls. many, but I'll tell you, 125 <laughs> grams. Oh. While Casey played the headmaster, the naughty boys created their own fireworks. Uncle Doug was a bad man. I mean, he's a lovely man, but he was a terror. And he'd do one of either two things to the new boys, guys like me. And it was basically, to become a part of World of Sport, you had to pass what could be described as an initiation test. So Doug would conduct the initiation test and you would be given a 30 second script on auto cue and you would start to read it. But then you'd see him light the bottom of the script with his cigarette lighter. So all of a sudden, this 30 seconder became more like 17 seconds because you quickened up trying to get it through before the flames ate up all the words. And in fact, we still have Miss Australia with us in uh, Leanne Cock and uh, uh, Leanne Dick, I should say. And Leanne, it's going to be very interesting to, uh, we come to the stage now, and that is, I guess, fashions on the field. And uh, we're looking well, at some of the best. Well, as soon as I said it, I could, I just sensed that she turned to stone. Sandy passed Unk's initiation. Oh, I remember one day uh, they set fire to when Sam Newman was doing the, uh, a live commercial, and they had the idiot sheet uh, which Sam was reading from, and uh, they set fire to that. And as Sam was trying to do the commercial, the idiot sheet was going up in flames. Thousands of people coming from... Bobby well, Davis remembers they were getting three quid a week. Over Australia. I can tell you this now. <laughs> Lou, Jack and I, we decided one year that we would go up and, and front case and see if we... We thought we were probably worth a bit more money. <laughs> and uh, we walked into Case's palatial office and uh, he said, sit down, boys, or something, you know, and we were all there looking, and he said, now, what is it you want? And we're just about to, I think Louis was the spokesman, Louis probably just about to blurt out what we were going to do. He said, 
If it's about money, there's nothing to talk about because that's it. If it's anything else, just sit down, we'll have a nice drink. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs>